This is our home, Palau. I live in Koror, the busiest part of Palau. I like to swim on the rock islands and go to Jellyfish Lake, where I can swim with millions of jellyfish. Every weekend, I visit Angar, my home island, where I play on the beach and swim with my sister. Palau is very beautiful underwater with lots of corals. We can see a lot of turtles. And there are many different kinds of fish. We depend on the ocean for our food. But our home as we know it will not be the same because of climate change. What is climate change? It is a change in the pattern of weather and related changes in oceans, land surfaces, and ice sheets occurring over time scales of decades or longer. El Nino and La Nina are weather patterns that describe conditions of the ocean and atmosphere. They occur every two to seven years and can affect weather all over the earth. During an El Nino event, there is warm water in the eastern Pacific with colder sea temperatures and droughts in Palau. During La Nina events, the warm water is in the western Pacific, and Palau will have warmer sea temperatures and plenty of rainfall. Under climate change, the global temperature has increased by 1 degree Celsius since 1880. Rainfall patterns are changing. Some places are experiencing intense rainfall that causes flooding. Other places experience droughts that parch the land, increase wildfires, and impact crops. With warmer temperatures, massive glaciers are melting, causing sea levels to rise. Keep in mind that global climate has varied naturally throughout Earth's history. For example, 20,000 years ago, Earth was covered in ice during the last glacial maximum. However, the problem is that in the last 150 years, human influence on the climate has been increasing. We are burning more fossil fuels destroying forests, and increasing agriculture to feed our expanding population. These activities produce greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Here is a breakdown of how much greenhouse gases are produced globally through different activities in 2016. Manufacturing, transportation, and electricity produce the largest percentage of global greenhouse gases. Agriculture, forestry, and land use produces 18% of global greenhouse gases. Waste and byproducts of chemical production in the other category produces 8% of global greenhouse gases. In 2016, 49 billion tons of global greenhouse gases were produced. That is equal to the weight of half a million container ships. We have been producing more greenhouse gases ever since. All these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, enter the atmosphere and wrap around the earth like a warm blanket. The warm blanket and the change in landscapes has contributed to the heating of the earth. And the climate and the world as we know it is changing. Climate change affects the whole world, but places and people can be affected differently. How is Palau specifically affected by climate change? Climate change is affecting our air and ocean temperatures. In Palau, there are more hot days and the nights are hotter. More hot days can lead to an increase in heat-related illnesses such as heat stroke. The ocean is heating up and it will continue to rise. With warmer temperatures, corals will bleach and die, interrupting the growth of the reef and affecting the health of the entire ecosystem, including the fish we eat. Climate change will also affect rainfall patterns, and Palau will experience intense rainfall that will lead to flooding and erosion. 
Flooding can increase cases of dengue fever and waterborne illnesses such as leptospirosis. Heavy rainfall can lead to landslides and road collapse. With heavy rainfall, it will be harder to grow crops for food. Too much rain can lead to poor soil health with little oxygen and nutrients, and an overgrowth of bacteria and fungi. While it is expected for Palau to have intense rainfall, it is also predicted that extreme El Nino events will occur more frequently, every 10 years instead of 20 years. During these extreme El Nino events, Palau experiences strong droughts that affects the water reservoir and river that serves Karor. With little to no rain during the strong droughts, freshwater levels decrease, affecting our water and food security. It is also after these extreme El Nino events, followed by warm temperatures, that the golden jellyfish in Jellyfish Lake have disappeared for a couple of years. The same things happened during previous extreme El Nino events that started in 1982, 1997, and 2015. Climate change will affect typhoon severity. Typhoons will continue to be uncommon, but they will be more intense. Since 1945, Palau has recorded 12 typhoons close by, or storms with 64 knot winds that come within 100 nautical miles of Palau. Here are a few examples of typhoons with over 100 knot winds that have hit Palau. In 1964, two typhoons passed near Palau within a month of each other. Typhoon Louise passed near Angar with 100 knot winds, destroying many buildings and crops in Angar and Peleliu. A month later, Typhoon Opal passed near Kayano with 140 knot winds, and a storm surge destroyed temporary tent shelters in Angar and Peleliu. In 1990, Typhoon Mike passed over Kosol Reef with 135 knot winds, causing property and crop damages of $2 million. The next typhoon to hit Palau was Bofa in 2012. Bofa passed near Angar with 135 knot winds and caused $10 million in damages. Strong winds from Typhoon Bofa brought down trees, power lines, and structures, and a storm surge flooded the eastern side of Babaldao. A year later, Typhoon Haiyan passed over Kayal in 2013 with 155 knot winds causing $3 million in damages. During Typhoon Haiyan, strong winds flattened many of the trees and houses in Kayao. Damage from storm surge was minimal because Typhoon Haiyan hit Kayao during a low tide. On a short time scale, average sea level goes up and down with El Nino and La Nina events. During an El Nino in 2015, Palau had record minimum low tides these extreme low tides expose corals to air and heat. A La Nina in June 2016 brought record maximum high tides and seawater covered parts of Long Island that are usually dry land. But what is happening long term on a scale of decades or longer? If you plotted all the highest tides for the last 50 years and drew a line through that best fits the data, you would see that the green line is on an upward trend. This says that the maximum high tides are getting even higher. The same goes for the minimum low tides. Minimum low tides are higher than they were 50 years ago. These data point out that long term, sea level is rising. The rise in sea level will become a problem to low-lying areas, villages, and taro patches along the coast that experience more flooding and erosion during La Nina events high spring tides, and storm events. Schools, homes, and other buildings near the water are at risk. Low-lying islands like Kayangal, Sonsorol, Fana, Poluana, and Meril of Sonsorol State, and Tobi and Helen Reef of Hatoho Bay State are also at risk due to sea level rising. Sea level rise will bring on many changes to Palau. While change is happening, there is hope we can turn things around there are solutions to curb the negative effects of climate change. Be creative and think of ways we can reduce fossil fuel dependency. Share your ideas with friends and family. Even simply shopping with a reusable bag can make a difference. Walk or ride a bike and use the car less. Encourage each other to spend time outdoors. Engaging with the natural world outside our homes gives us incentive to maintain nature for future generations. 
Be invested in your environment. Make it a part of your life.